everyone, it's Aika and for today's video, I will be sharing my editing and filming routine. So this is where I'll be showing you guys my tips on how I try to keep my vlogs more interesting and some of the cool fonts I use, transitions and special effects, the music that I use, you're gonna find everything here. So. This video will be divided into two parts. The first one is how I film my videos because of course there wouldn't be a video to edit if we don't film it first. And the second part is how I edit and keep my videos interesting. So yeah, if you guys want to know all about that, then just keep watching. My hands are getting really cold from my ice matcha. The camera that I'm currently using and the one that I'm filming on right now is the Canon M100 and this is a beginner friendly type of camera. Like when you open it, it's not too complicated. You can easily adjust the settings and the brightness in one tap. This one also has detachable lens so if you want to use another lens like the wide lens then you can easily just change it. But I just want to remind you guys that you don't really need to go out and buy an expensive camera right away. Way. When I was first starting out, I was just using my iPhone 8 Plus and it did work nicely and yeah. When I was really consistent about posting videos, that's when I decided to buy my first ever camera which is the Canon M100. So whenever I'm out and I'm filming a vlog, I like to use this tripod. I like this one because I can easily manipulate it to however I want it. If I want it to be shorter or longer, if I want it to be bent like this. I just really like this because there's a lot of variations that I can do with it and if I'm filming like this um, sit down video, I just used my regular tripod. I'm gonna try to find the links to where I got these and I'm gonna link it in the description box. For editing my videos, I am using my MacBook Pro which I recently just got. The one that I used before was the MacBook Air which works perfectly as well but I just needed something that's more powerful so I can edit faster. If you're gonna be sitting in front of your laptop all day, you need a laptop stand. This one really helped because whenever I'm filming, I can easily like go from this which kind of hurts my back after a while so whenever I'm using a laptop stand, it just made my posture better and it doesn't make my back hurt as much so yeah just life-changing products that I use so heading on to my favorite portion which is editing I'm gonna teach you guys how I edit using Filmora X and this platform has everything you need to make a YouTube video it has a lot of special effects some cool fonts transitions it is a paid app but honestly it's really affordable and super worth it if you're starting to if you're just starting to learn on how to edit. So you can download this application by going to their website. If you guys want to try it out first, there's also a free trial that you can try to download. You have the panels on the left side, the preview of the clips on the right side, and then here down below is where I will be dragging the media needed for the videos. So this is the first part of my editing routine. The first part is the rough cut, and this is where I delete all the stuff that I don't want in the video. The stuttering, the awkward pauses, especially when I don't really know what to say anymore. A lot of like mispronounced words that will never see the light of day. Yeah, honestly, this takes a while, so patience is key. And a way to kind of improve the situation is to learn the shortcuts. So these are the common shortcuts that I use to make this process faster because honestly, it takes me a couple of hours to do this. So after doing the rough cut, I kind of have an idea of how I want the video to be, like the feel and the vibe. So now is the time to look for music for the video. I usually get my music from thematic.com. This is where you can get non-copyrighted music and all you have to do is to credit the artist in the description box. I also get some of my music from YouTube. I just search non-copyrighted music and then the stuff and the music appears. How I download this is through this application, through this website I mean, or sometimes I just search up YouTube to mp3 and then I just click on what's available. Personally, I love using groovy songs, songs that you can dance to, songs that make the video more lively and upbeat. So these are the songs that I really love and songs that I use on a daily basis. The first one is this one. Just a symptom you 
Another song that I like to use for the intro is this one called Let the Love. song that you guys always ask me about like whenever I use it some of you always comment and ask what song it is and it's this one make sure to adjust the volume whenever you're putting songs onto your videos especially when it's a talking video because your viewers come to your channel to hear you speak to hear what you have to say and when the music is too loud it kind of overpowers what you're saying so it can be a little distracting another tip is to fade in the music when it's kind of like transitioning into another clip and this just makes the end of the music more seamless after picking out the song i like to go on with my intro and this is a compilation of my favorite like clips from the entire video i usually trim it to about 10 to 15 seconds just short and sweet so my viewers can have an overview of what they can expect from the video when adding text to my videos i just go to the titles panel and then i click on the basic and drag it here on the timeline on top of my clips and then for the fonts i like to download cool fonts from thefont.com and here are the ones that I use the most. I just like to add different fonts to my videos because it keeps the videos more interesting and sometimes when I'm just like doing something and not really talking throughout the video I just like to add like a description of what I'm doing and this keeps the viewers engaged. I also like to play around with the text spacing so the letters look a bit more spread out, a lot easier to read and it just looks a lot better. Something that I do to make my videos more personalized is to add doodles on the video and I like to use the app called Sketchbook to do this. This is what I do when I have more free time because it does take a while to write down every text that I need. I usually use the chalk pastel and the technical pen. So with this, I just create around two to three layers and then I export it as a PNG file onto my laptop. And then what I do is I try to shorten the clips as much as possible so it kind of has this like moving effect. Here are the cool effects that I found on Filmora. The first one is the image mask. Extremely dirty film for that grain effect. I used to download this off YouTube but I was really happy when I saw it here. The next one is the 90s viewfinder. Sometimes I like to enhance the color of my clips and in order to do this I use a filter called Beautiful Memories and you can find this one in the Filmora FX tab. So whenever I'm jumping from another clip to the next one I like to use a transition. Okay, this is the most basic transition. It's just using the mouse effect, the mouse sound effect. I downloaded this one on YouTube. Just search up any effect that you want. If you want the swish effect, if you want the ding effect, just kind of like describing the effect. You can easily like get it on YouTube. Another one that I like to use is the cube. It looks really cool for me. And the round zoom out for that filmy, vibey effect. Whenever I'm filming vlogs, it can be easy for me to just keep talking and just keep describing what I'm doing instead of actually like doing the thing. So what I usually do is I film myself doing it and then whenever I'm talking about it, I'm gonna put the clip of me doing the thing that I'm talking about on top. I think it's called the picture on picture effect. So here's an example. So I just finished making my matcha. It was really, really good. I added a bunch of honey, so it made it really sweet. In that clip, I'm gonna add the video of me making my matcha to keep it more interesting. So if you're planning to finally film your first YouTube video, but you're scared of making a mistake, what I always tell myself is that I can always edit it out. Even now, I get so nervous whenever I'm filming a video. I don't know why, but the fear is just always there. And I'm afraid to like mess up but then I remember that you know I can just edit it I can just edit all the ums all the mispronounced words all the stuttering that I constantly do whenever I film you'll never know all the skills you can unlock by 
doing it. Prior to filming and editing my first video, I didn't really have any experience. I just practiced and watched a bunch of YouTube videos to learn and if I can do it, you can do it too. I want you to take this as a sign from the universe to finally get started on that video you want to work on or get started on filming and putting all your creative touches, your creative juices on something that you're proud of creating. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button because that really helps out my channel a lot. And I will see you guys on my next video. Bye-bye!